I'm sorry, brother. I'm sorry that I brought you into this. I just wanted things to be the way they used to be. That's my brother, Will. I could use some help. My wife needs this surgery. This is real life. How's that right? You put your life down on the line for this country? You leave your family, your home? How much do you need? 231. How about more? 32 million. And I need an extra man. I came to you for a loan. Look, have I ever gotten you anything that I couldn't get you out of? It's time for you to do something for your family. What can I do you for, officer? We're just doing a transfer in the back. I'll lay uh, you in in 20 minutes. Uh, if I could just get it done real quick, because I'm on the clock, promise not to rob the place. Oh. <laughs> Seriously, because that would be bad for my job. <laughs> I promise. All right, okay. All right, all okay, right come all on. Right. <laughs> okay. Uh, 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 uh. Let's go, D. You are all gonna have the greatest story to tell at dinner tonight. Get out! Don't shoot a cop! Go, 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 go! Lock everything down. Nothing gets out. <laughs> I got a cop shot. I gotta get him to the hospital. I'm gonna need you to help us. Why don't you help us? We're doing hostages now. We're not crashing into this ambulance. We got a brother cop on board. Do you have EMT experience? Combat three eyes. You're a soldier? Yeah. We are trying to save you. One, two, three. Hey! Don't you move! You think you're so tough with that gun? No, Daddy, relax. I gotta get back to my wife and my son. Does your wife know you're up, Banks? We're not the bad guys. We're just the guys trying to get home. We don't get to walk off into the sunset. Well! Danny, everybody knows how dangerous you are. Do you? You get your helos out of here now! I'm gonna get you back home, little brother. I'm gonna get everybody home. Welcome back to the Pop Culture Corner, everybody. Today we have a special show for you. A special segment continuing our coverage of Michael Bay's Ambulance with A. Martinez. Before we get into that, guys, make sure to smash that like button, share the show across social media, and smash that subscribe button for more content like this. If you want to help support the show, become a member and or send a super chat while we're live. And don't forget, we're going to be at Springfield Comic Con come July 23rd. Come and see us. Come and hang out and enjoy the show. All right, guys, let's get into it. All right, guys, we are back today with uh, A. Martinez, uh, who was just recently in Ambulance, which is uh, actually today. Today it comes out on uh, on uh, physical media. Uh, today's it's the day. On, yeah, so... I mean, I just spoke with Garrett Delahunt the other day uh, about his role and, and his time on the film. Um, you know, how was it getting to work with Michael Bay? You know, he's very fast paced, you know, known for working in kind of like dangerous locations and, and really testing the limits of his actors. So uh, how was your experience? It was amazing. Uh, I've never had more fun working on a movie than that. You know, really? uh, I, yeah, I thought I thought to myself, in fact, I told my manager, I said, it's like watching a dude with a toy. It's like he's a kid with a toy. You know, he's always got a camera on his shoulder and he's looking at you through the lens and he's talking to you, you know, and I'm and my manager saying, hey, man, the guy's in his 50s. Don't call him a kid. And I'm saying, well, I'm just telling you the way he acts, you know, uh, and he did a lot of stuff like, uh, you know, basically re leaning on and go, OK, I'm going to bring the camera here. So when I hit you here, I want you to do something in counterpoint to like create some kind of visual energy and stuff. And I thought it was just, uh, 
wonderful to be involved with somebody who's so in the moment and so willing to discover things as he goes. It's one of the reasons that the film is so, it just pops. It's so visceral. You just feel like you're wearing it on your skin. It's great. Yeah, most most people are saying this is one of his best movies just because of the feeling. Because, you know, when I was talking to Garrett, I was like, it gave me like, it gave me an indie movie vibe, but then the scope of the movie was just so large and, and uh, something would blow up and you'd be like, oh yeah, I am watching a Michael Bay movie. Yeah, but right, right. There was, <laughs> there was something about it that was, it just felt very real and and the adrenaline that was pumping through when I was watching was just um, just beyond. Um, yeah. How did you get your start in acting? Because I was reading about you and, and it looks like you were, you, you wanted to go to UCLA, right? Yeah. Yeah, I did. I went to UCLA. Uh, I, I transferred at the last minute from political science to theater. I was really lucky to be able to do that because right after I did that, the the theater department got so uh, clogged that you really couldn't get in on a, you know, in a short notice like I did. And I was doing an acting class, an improvisational class one day, and a casting director was there looking for someone like me. He was sitting up in the um, top row of a theater in the round in the dark, and no one knew he was there. My good luck was that three of my classmates jumped me into improvs that day. So he got to get a big dose of what I did. And he walks up afterwards and says, hey, man, I'm looking for somebody like you to be in this movie. Are you interested in meeting the director? And I'm thinking, you know, I, I basically was, you know, living in, you know, just a little apartment in Venice and I didn't have an agent, had nothing going on. I had no intention of starting. And I thought, who is this guy and what is his angle? But he was legit. And two weeks later, I'm in Tucson, Arizona, making a movie. So I just got lucky, man. Right place, right time. But you, you, you also go. deserved it. I mean, you. I think, what, at the age of 12, you won a, a, a competition at the Hollywood Bowl. Did yeah. that kind of spark you to go towards acting, though? Like, did yeah, that, you know, I, that really get your career going? Yeah, you know, I, I, I sang. Um, basically, I started singing in church growing up like a lot of people did and uh right. but the great the thing that really helped me was i had a teacher in uh, junior high school when i went into seventh grade she was a pro uh, a real legitimate musician and she mm -hmm. had gone into teaching because she realized she had the foresight to realize she need to have a, a pension when she retired and so she became this teacher and she you know she basically went to the principal of our school and said you know i know how to do the real stuff so how about you let me put on abbreviated versions of broadway musicals with these kids and the pr principal said yes and of course you think well, broadway musicals with kids what's that going to be like but this woman was such a genius that she actually taught us organically and we actually put on shows that mattered so that was my first taste of acting is doing the musicals under her tutelage. Her name was Ruth Anderson, and she was my friend, and she she passed away in her 80s, actually. Yeah, long, uh, fulfilling life. So that's yes. that's always good to have, you know, someone in your life that really, you know, was a, someone you look up to and, and someone that you wanted to be like a certain genre. I mean, do you have, do you like uh, the dramatic roles, like the really, the roles that you really have to kind of look in, in at your, uh, your credits? And I noticed mm. the theme, and it was really mm. like, you know, a very, very serious, you, you sound like a very serious man, like someone who likes to explore their characters and, and really get deep into who they are, explore yeah, their that, motivations. That's a nice way of putting it. I appreciate that. Yeah, yeah. you know, I mean, it's, uh, I feel it's a privilege. I think it's a dream what I'm able to do. I, I, I never would have imagined I could have had um, a journey like this. I never could have imagined it. You know, when I was a kid, I was just wandering around just fantasizing about stuff and uh, all, all up in my head. My dad left the, left the television broke. When it would break, he'd leave it broke. <laughs> and twice it broke. So for 18 months at a time, we had no, we had no image hit, hitting us. You know, we just basically were left to our own devices to imagine stories. So you start to hear things and you think of things. And I got all up in my head for a long time. So this was a, a, a nice kind of path to start to exercise that imagination because acting is so much about what can you imagine, you know? And I just, uh, I feel really lucky that I got to do it. And it's funny, I, I mainly do serious stuff. I sort of, you know, people give me grief about, you know, what about these lines here? Why are you so, what's, what's, why are you always clenching your brow? I'm thinking, man, I'm not doing it. That's just the way my face fell, you know? I got that face. But occasionally I'll get to do something funny. I got to do, uh, uh, a little bit on All in the Family when the, should that show was ending. I got to, you know, watch uh, Carol O'Connor play Archie Bunker up close and personal. That was pretty. Yeah, you were in the bar, right? I was in the bar. And yeah, yeah the last the bar. The yeah. bar. 
And then I got to uh, do She Devil with Meryl Streep and Roseanne and Ed Bagley. And I got to watch, you know, Meryl Streep up close and personal doing comedy, which was like going to school. And then finally, uh, I got to do this show called um, uh, The Cherokee Kid with Sinbad. And that, you know, it's my, my wife said to me, she said, you know, when you come home from this gig, you're in the best mood day after day after day, you're in the best mood. And I thought, well, not only is it a comedy and I got this really funny character, but Sinbad is like an angel on earth. And he just, he's so generous and he made being on that gig like a dream. It was right. wonderful. It reminded, reminded me frankly of Michael Bay because my, I come home from, I come back from lunch early one day on the set of Ambulance and he, just me and him or you know, the, none of the other actors, he says, let's do something. What do you want to do? There's, let's do something. I go, well, there's this giant knife on my desk, it's a prop, but it's this beautiful ornate, it's engraved and all this stuff. He said, let's, let's do something. And he comes up with this idea that this is the knife that the people you owe money to, they sent you this knife as a gift, but it's also a knife that could kill you. So you, right. they're reminding you that you owe them the money, you know, and I, and I got to basically just do this little bit about th these people that I'm in trouble with, which is sort of why I get in trouble in this movie. And, yeah. uh, and he put it in the, in the movie and it's just basically boom. You know, it's like, let's think of some, let's do something. Let's put on a show that kind of vibe. Yeah. Just, Garrett, cool. Garrett was, Garrett talked about a moment like that as well, where they kind of wrote it on the sidewalk and then filmed it. So that's, mm. I mean, Michael is always, always thinking and going. Yes. Um, was there any specific set of challenges working where, with him that you can think I, of? I, I think the, uh, the hardest thing, I mean, when, when, I, when I read the script, I thought, okay, I, I hope I get this because if I get to do this, um, it, this particular thing that my character gets to do is just an unforgettable pass, Very, you know, yeah. and, and that's what you hope for as you go along over the years, you know, you hope to do things that stick in people's memories and you, you notice when they do. And I thought this is one of those scenes that people will never forget. And then you go to do it. And it's, it was really, really challenging. You know, we, we had to approach it on a couple of different days and, there was a lot of kind of tension in the air and how are we going to work this out? And, you know, and the, 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 the amount of thinking that went into figuring out how to make that thing work was so intense. And I just, uh, you know, you just don't want to, um, to be part of the reason that it doesn't work. You know, you're basically all about trying to make this work. So it was, there was a lot of tension and, and, and basically Jake and, um, and Yaya Abdul Mateen, who plays his brother, mm -hmm. they show up in my world and they're jacked up because they're they're just their lives are on the line. And my character's nice. thing is I just want to slow them down. So they want to go fast. I want to go slow. And we're basically in contention right at the get just over that. And it uh, it was very challenging to actually figure out what it was that had to be done and stick to it, even though there was a lot of energy saying, come on, come on, come on, come on. And I'm going no chill man chill dude. yeah Just, slow it down yeah relax over there man listen trust me. <laughs> <laughs> no you you are great you're great in this movie i i really loved your character um it was poppy right yeah his name, yeah poppy and uh uh, just, I mean, you're also, uh, I wanted to talk to you a little bit about Cowboy Bebop because mm. a lot of the fans were really, really upset when they canceled it. Um, yeah. How did you feel when they, when, you, when they broke that news? I was really, really upset that they canceled it. I couldn't yeah, believe a lot they of canceled it. You know, and I, I uh, you know, I, I know that there was a lot of pushback at the get, like, why are you, would you, you know, like you, you're going to remake this sanctified anime? How, how, wh why would you do that? Right. As if the only reason to do it were some kind of financial gain. The truth is the people who made Cowboy Bebop love it. You know, right. Yoko Kano came and brought her music again. You know, she, she mm -hmm. the, the people did it out of love and the amount of blood, sweat and tears that went into making that thing was so profound. And to see uh, so many people turn their nose up over, you know, the fact that, ah, uh, you know, don't, you're not being pure enough by leaving this anime to stand on its own through time. I, right. I was just really disappointed. But that said, I get to look back on it now and I talk to people about it all the time who loved it. And, you know, and the fact that there's those 10 episodes of it, you know, is better than none. And I- It's better than nothing, yeah. Better than nothing. It's a good way to look really, at it. Yeah, I was proud to be a part of it. One of the one of the things I want to talk to you about is over the years, you know, since you've, you know, you've been developing and growing as an actor, um, is there 
you know, something that's changed in the way you approach your roles or how you select them? Well, um, yeah, there, you know, there's certain things that you, um, you, you just don't touch. And I think especially as you get toward the end of the journey, I mean, I'm very much aware of like, you know, coming to the final chapter of not only my career, but my life. So, you know, you, you definitely, you, you get more picky about what it is you're going to spend your time doing. And, uh, you know, I, I try not to uh, do things that I think um, I, I would be embarrassed about, you know, something I might have done like 20, 30 years ago for a paycheck, because I've needed a paycheck. Sometimes you just need a damn job. Sometimes, <laughs> you know, it's a hard road. Oh, but, yeah. You know, oh, yeah. It's a hard road. And so, you know, sometimes you just like, go, okay, I'm going to hold my nose and do this. But, but, you know, you can't do that when it comes toward the end, you, you really, you got to like, make sure that the things that you're doing are things that you can feel good about. So that, and, and plus, just like anything else, you know, the longer you do it, uh, the better you get at it. I feel very, very lucky that I get to do something that as long as I can keep my mind together and my body pretty much together. I mean, you get older, those things you just can't do as well, but but, you know, I work real hard to stay strong and to stay limber. And so, you know, I just had to do a whole bunch of stunts down in uh, up in uh, Vancouver and I was able to do it without getting hurt. So I feel, you know, kind of relieved about hey. that, you know, but the main thing is just, um, you know, to uh, not waste time on things that don't matter. You start to learn when you're putting a performance together, you know, where are the key moments you have to focus on them and you have to focus on the moments that give you the most trouble. If there are moments that give you trouble, you've got to figure out why and fix them. And don't worry about, you know, looking at the whole thing from the beginning to the end every time, figure out the places that matter most, devote the lion's share of your attention to that at the beginning. And then by the end, you know, things will, things will, uh, will smooth out. It's just basically being smart about doing the hard work. The hard work, yeah, that's great advice for someone who's a young actor and and you know just starting out because this, I mean, this business is at the end of the day, dog eat dog, right? Mm. So, I mean, put your foot in the door, don't let it out, and and <laughs> and keep going, right? Keep so, going. thank you so much for for joining me today. Uh, I really, really, really appreciate it. And again, I you know I tell everyone I would love to have you on the long form you know podcast, be able to talk about your whole career, uh, yeah. hopefully one day. Yeah, anytime, um, you got anything anytime. new?